Hey guys, Code Wolf here, and I'm back in Back to the Future Chapter 1. It's about time. And what we have to do is go find Doc. Let's do this. I think he's in jail. Should we walk across the street? Um. No. Uh, <laughs> here it is. Station. Who are you and what do you want? Can I talk to, uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um, no. Then scram! Oh, wait, no. Doc! <gasps> Doc! Doc! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that. But it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, y you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Oh, dear, Doc. Hey, Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse! Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Um... Go back in time. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without know. my unjust You're incarceration, the time events time that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of yeah. continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Um... But Why don't we tell the authorities? Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be <laughs> murdered tomorrow? They'd ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. No. Uh, you make a step? Why don't we try to tough it out? Now that we know what's coming, maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be mowed down in a hail of Tommy gun fire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puffy mass of bones and gristle. Who writes like that? Wow. According to the byline, one Edna Strickland. Oh. I should have guessed. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions yeah. could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and- No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me! 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! Um, it'll break, uh, Won't paradox. talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go with my younger self into finishing the prototype. Okay. Okay, yourself. let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. <laughs> soup kitchen is right around the corner. 
I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Okay. So, we gotta go to this. Right over here. Oh, it's right there. Oh. McFly? Biff? Kid? Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway... I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Alright. Where's the phone? Where's that? Stop it! <laughs> it's like... Oh, it's an old phone. Extremely old. Brown resident. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. The courthouse? Find him. You can walk around the corners. Let the camera keep changing. <laughs> Warehouse is still clocked out, right? Camera angles. Stop. Oh, God. Thank you, this. The camera. Walk it out a little bit. There's Amy. Talk to Amy. Hey, how you doing, Amy? Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the courthouse. Jay walking. Oh, there he is. Don't touch those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, H2 huh. A okay. by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation Person. value of A, right? What am I missing here? Heck. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. Um... Fuck jail. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? Uh, you must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Uh, okay. Wait, is that... Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? 
See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing! <laughs> It's more biology, but okay. Um, there's something important. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Corleone, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. Okay. Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the... am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Wow. Don't talk this pretty tense. What's I gonna do? Hello? No solicitors! Okay. Well, no. It's gonna be the inverse. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone! What are you, no. what are you What's doing? this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter. Very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Don't worry, your secrets... Come on, you could trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! Really? Well, in America, case, you can see a multiplied by the thing. inverse. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone! Come on. Let me be finished. So, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till 9. 9 at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. Wow. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. <laughs> Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before 8, my Pop would kill me. You sound a little scared. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Um... Damn it. Uh, about don't your... Don't say it. I had to go talk to older dog. Mm, now if H stands Thing. for one, a one-dimensional harmonic oscillator, then naturally... I don't know. <laughs> Come on, Doc. Er, right Come on. on. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone! Damn it. Uh, about don't your... Don't say it. God's sake. I have to Let me go talk to older Doc. See if he... He tips. Walk over there quickly. Why is that all scratched out? Oh, come on. Camera changes, messes up the controls. Here. Psst, Doc! Marty! Have you found my younger self yet? Um. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I met your younger self. Great! And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? You won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. 
tell me what happened. Um, on a sec. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, uh, father. What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. It sucked a lot. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him. But right now, my younger self probably thinks you've been sent by my father to check up on me. Um... Trust what do I do to convince Team Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. Um, yeah. You know, your younger <laughs> self seems really dedicated to the law. The it's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. Okay. Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! The Expo? Yes, the Expo! How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So, it was a big success? No! It was a miserable failure, but it was a spectacularly miserable failure. One which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. All right, okay, let's go talk. So let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Yeah. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. I'm working on it. Let's go find the young one again. It's in the middle of town. Can I cross the street? No. All the way over here. I've got this control thing. Yeah. A multiplied by the inverse of A might well be equal to A's expectation. Will you just there give you me go. a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Oh, come on. Damn it. Uh, about Don't your- Don't say it! How? Or one of the one-dimensional harmonic constants later then. Vincent. Oh. Vincent. It won't give it time to like... Something in common. Oh, do I have anything in my inventory? Um... Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. I'm missing here. I didn't make it, but then no. It kind of be bad. No. Okay, it doesn't work. Okay. Come back. Whoa. One side. I don't need to go in there anymore. Oh, he's coming out. Mm, no. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Damn it. Uh, about Don't your. Don't say it. Uh, come on. Oh, what am I missing here? Inventory. Try this. Oh, Don't think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I. Oh. <laughs> okay. Our friction remains it's constant in the gravitational constant. Notebook. It's variable. Doc's notebook doesn't belong to him. Okay, actually, it does belong to him, but not yet. In any event, it's probably a really bad idea to give him a book full of all the things he hasn't invented yet. Continuum. Nah. Okay. Jeez, this guy's a. Okay. 
I go back to the older dog. I'm so confused right now. And my dog is scratching out the door. Great, okay, let's go find dog girl. Older dog! Notebook. Solid choice for notebook. Psst! Dog! Marty! How goes the escape plan? Um. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Ah, oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that! That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. Um... Record your muttering. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? No. Think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I Good know. grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. They mean... Universe is... Universe is hologram... Hang in there, Doc. Shit, I forgot. What Not the best choice of words, Marty. Universe Marty. Universe hologram by Golden Eye. Let's go find... Younger Dog. Out of illusion, universe is a hologram. Bye, gold. Bye. <laughs> Where's the... There is. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Yeah, that. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator? Yeah. Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket-powered drill. Where did you learn so much about... science? Um... In the future. Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite yeah, know sure. what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Um... Really need Can it. I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Uh, tonight? Nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel! I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol! And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal! Here's the subpoena. I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> it's Kid Tannen! Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. Okay... <laughs> so... Okay, let's go... Top. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Einie? It's short for Einstein. 
Einstein, of course, because he was a patent officer just like you. Really? Okay. So I am going to end it here. So I'll come back next time and we go talk to Kid Tannen. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!